Deadly car bombs rocked the city streets of... Yet, but the Islamist militant group Boko Haram is certainly being suspected. That's the same group that claimed responsibility for kidnapping. Time Nigeria says it is aiming to step up the pressure on Boko Haram. The government has asked the United Nations Security Group and put it on the list of terrorist organizations. If the UN Security Council agrees to that, sanctions could be imposed against Boko Haram as early as. Thursday. Typically that means freezing assets, an arms embargo, and a ban on travel. Not sure how much of an effect that would actually have. We should point out though as well here, the Nigerian government has come under fierce criticism for bungling this crisis, this kidnapping crisis from the get-go, and stumbling through the response. For more, let's go to J. Peter Pham. He is the Africa Center Director at the Atlantic Council. He's often come on the show to talk to us about stories generated from Africa. Today he's coming to us from our studios in Washington. Let's talk about these UN sanctions on Boko Haram. Would it actually make any difference to them? Well, it makes a certain difference, Todd, insofar as it's important for the international community to come together, show support not only for Nigeria, but for the efforts by regional states to fight this plague, this threat to the common uh, peace and security of Africa. That being said, however, let's be uh, not delude ourselves that these sanctions are going to have a great effect on Boko Haram's operations. This is a group that is well financed, primarily, although they get some ideological support, some training, some weapons, and maybe a limited amount of resources from abroad. Most of the funding is domestic. It started out with help from some of President Goodluck Jonathan's opponents. It's also made money from kidnapping for ransom. Last year, a French family was ransomed for over $3 million. Ordinary Nigerians are ransomed for up to $10,000. Uh, bank robberies, and then uh, all sorts of other rackets. So this is a well-financed group that doesn't need the international resources and doesn't really rely on those external flows of assistance to keep its operations running. Let's talk a little bit about what the Nigerian government has done, or in this case hasn't done, to deal with this crisis. We're hearing that they have not even sent any troops into this forest uh, near the town where these girls were kidnapped, a forest that many people say is where these girls are being held. Th that's right, Todd. The, the military force that's closest in Borno State, the 7th Division of the Nigerian Army, which is supposedly of the spear tip of the, the actions against Boko Haram, actually last week mutinied and fired upon their commanding general, who then ultimately was cashiered by the Nigerian uh, chief of staff. This is the fourth commanding general of this division who's had to be removed since the beginning of this year. So that turnover in leadership, and part of it, you know, I, although I don't condone breakdown of military discipline, it's understandable. Many of these soldiers have not been paid for months. They lack the proper equipment and training. And so to send them into that forest uh, perhaps might be viewed as a suicide. We are coming up now on five weeks or so. These uh, families, these parents are trying to deal with this situation now. Uh, don't seem to be much closer to a resolution. Are you surprised that a country such as Nigeria, which is a regional powerhouse, billions of dollars spent on their military, uh, is finding itself pretty uh, almost powerless to deal with this at this point anyway? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Nigeria is a very wealthy country, Africa's largest economy. But money allocated to the military doesn't always trickle down in terms of equipment, training, or even basic salaries and uniforms. So there's a lot of capacity building and corruption, quite frankly, needs to be rooted out. Moreover, this is becoming a regional problem. Uh, and some of Nigeria's neighbors are much poorer and lack those resources. Just at the end of last week, Boko Haram was blamed for an attack just over the border in Cameroon. They kidnapped 10 Chinese oil workers, seized about a dozen rather expensive pieces of equipment, which will no doubt be sold for yet more money uh, to fund their operations. So this is a problem that's spilling over Nigeria's borders and requires an integrated regional approach. J. Peter Pham with the Atlantic Council. Great to get you on, sir. Thanks again. Thank you, Tom. Pro-Russian separatists 